All right, so you said that what I want, which is basically to leave the church amicably, as, as, we, as can be done, mm -hmm. and I'll, I'll say that, that you know, I'm not looking to, to make waves, right. but I've been in the church 33 years. Yeah. It's not delivering uh, what I expected it to do and, and be for me. And I've decided I no longer want to be a Scientologist, and since I put a lot of money on account, I want that money back. Mm -hmm. And I'll go my merry way. Mm -hmm. You said in order to do that first, we needed to have a meeting. So let's do the meeting, and then get to point B directly. OK. okay. I just state my goals up front as to why I'm here at this meeting. Yeah, understood. No problem. Um, yeah, I guess primarily I was just a uh, beam that um, this is not something you've ever expressed before. Mm. Um, no, that's incorrect. <clears throat> it's been expressed for the last two years uh, at great in great detail that doubt, I was, concerns, oh, yeah. wavering, so on and so forth. Yeah, yes, yeah, but so, I mean, this is I'm not a leaving, and I want my money. Yeah, that's that's, okay. that's definitely something you haven't said before, which is obviously different than. I have doubts, I have concerns, I'm not sure, you know, whatever, I'm upset, or I don't want to continue, or, you know, these kinds of things, it's, you know, different, right? Um, and obviously there's, you know, ramifications of, of, uh, of doing, you know, what you're saying, um, you know, which is expulsion from the church, and, and um, uh, so, you know, you would no longer be associating with Scientologists and things like that. Um, and I don't know. Clarifying that, because you said that I, I you can, can talk I can to anybody you want to. Yeah, but just, you can talk to anybody you want to. To your point, though, you said that I can no longer have an association with Scientologists. Well, you wouldn't, for the fact that it's yeah. church policy. When someone takes repayment, they're expelled from the church. Hmm. Yeah, we're because we're under no obligation to do that. You know, like if you gave donations to any other church and went back and said, you know, I went to confession, and confession didn't <clears> work for me, and I'm not happy, so I want my all my donations back, they would laugh at you. But in our case, we're, you know, we deliver a service and we're quite confident on that service. And it's extremely rare that people actually, you know, choose to get their money back. So there's a set payment for a uh, each service. I put that money on account. Uh, <clears throat> those services were not received. Uh, they were not donations to the church. So let's not quibble over the word donations. Um, no, they, they, they were they were no. donations, and sure, that's sure, covered yeah. under the agreement with the Internal okay. Revenue Service. I'm not going to argue that point. With people you. take tax deductions on them. I don't know if you took tax deductions on those donations when you made them. Yeah, and you know what? The IRS is fully going to expect to get the money that they didn't get because I took the tax deductions. Completely aware of that. Okay. Yeah. Well, my money. So let's. Larry, I'm not trying to make this contentious, and you and I have never sat down and had a conversation on this. Okay. But and the fact of the matter is, if you could just relax. Because I'm not your enemy. And you know, you are the one who started this out with a phone call from somebody who has made it currently his life's work to not only attack my religion and my church, but attack me personally. Okay. So if, if you wanted to actually sit down and have a conversation and an open dialogue about this to work out whatever it is, we could do that. What we're faced with right now is a scenario whereby you're asking for your money back and you want to leave the church. That That's... a, a uh, frankly, a relatively simple request, okay. um, and one that is, you know, fulfilled when it's asked. It happens, albeit rarely, but it does happen, and it's not difficult to to deal with. Well, then, then we're but, on the same page. But <laughs> what what happens is is that your opening salvo. Did you want to close the door, James? I think I did. But someone opened it up. Um, your sort of, for lack of a better term, opening salvo was to have Jason call me. Now, I don't know if you're familiar with what's happening there, but well, he's, he, he called me one, in your case, with regards to your matter, um, with, with kind of what essentially, based on the earlier calls that came before, what is essentially was an extortionist type of communication. In other words, I'm doing all these things, and I'm going to keep doing them, and you know, I'm in the middle of them, and not only do I want my money, but I want my folders, and Larry wants his money. And it's sort of like, well, okay, well, why, well, wouldn't, why wouldn't Larry call me? And, yeah. and I'm curious why Larry didn't call me. He says, well, I'm sorry, you're curious. And, and it's just like right off the bat. And I'm like, ah, Larry's not my enemy. And you have to understand, you know, 
you know, when you have somebody like that as your ambassador, and he specifically chooses to call me to communicate it, it reeks of a different agenda. Um, I would go so far as to wonder if, if in fact, the agenda is, is that once um, you receive your money, that um, you have some other intention, or some intention to take your grievances public, or minimally give free reign to Jason and whoever he's associated with to do the same. Um, and, um, and that's, you know, obviously of concern. I think that you would agree, I hope that you would agree, that Scientologists are people of goodwill, that their intention is to help others. Um, I realize that you're communicating that you haven't been helped, um, and um, that's fine. <laughs> um, but um, but that you know, with and in Scientology, with Scientologists, and certainly people you know, whether it's you know uh, Tate Rupert or Jim Meskimen or Kelly Daniels, or I'm thinking of different people who are in orientation with you, but um, or people certainly that I, I know that you know um, and and have been friends with that you would consider them your friends, that you would consider you don't have anything against them personally, and so on and so forth. Absolutely. Um, and that you certainly wouldn't want to do anything that would be um, distressful or harmful or cause them harm or upset or distress or so on and so forth. Um, and I don't get that that's where you're coming from. Um, no, and I think it'd be silly for either of us, any of us here, to wrongly assume that leaving the church also means leaving my uh, a, a third dynamic that I've had and held dear for 33 years. And the people in it for 33 years have become very dear and close friends of mine and that this action, of course, uh, does not come um, without a great amount of um, self, um, you know, exploration and insight and introspection and all of that and uh, having to weigh a whole lot of things. And one of them is my dear friends and 98% of the members of Scientology. It's the 2% that I don't like and that makes it to use a percentage that is very near and dear to all Scientologists that makes it um, something that means I have to walk away from it. So, um, yeah, I'm just concurring with what you're saying here. It's, it's, these are dear friends of mine, and uh, they have nothing to do with my leaving. In fact, they were, the, they were the, probably the hardest factor of my, hardest factor for me to leave and make this decision. Um, but that's part of the trap. And I can't be trapped by those kinds of considerations and personages and even though they're uh, they're good friends they're part of an overall trap so I I seek to escape the trap and lose my friends but I have lots of friends um, and since then have you spent time with Jason or Mark Headley or Barry Van Sickle or any that's, of these people that, that's not any part of the topic of this discussion well, I think it is. No, it's not. I'm not here to be interrogated, in, uh, introverted, intimidated, or even... Larry. Yeah, I'm, I'm no, so no, introverted. No. I'm so intimidating. I mean, it's just me. You know what I mean? Yeah, Tommy, who are you? <laughs> it's just you. I mean, I mean I'm not, who are you? Not meaning in a, in a, in a way to, to degrade your position. In fact, it's exactly the opposite. You're on the front lines of this, and you as much as open this conversation. He's an enemy of the church, so now you're going to pump me about my involvement with Jason. That ain't going to happen. That's not why. That's not why I'm here. Oh, Let's I just, talk about. I think the whole thing smacks of some other agenda, and I think it's and I think, think it's what you like. Think what you like. And I don't. I don't believe you. To be honest with you, Good. I don't believe you. Thank you. Here's what's relevant about it, Larry. Is there's certain ramifications to what you're doing, which we're what are they? We're, we are uh, obligated to inform you. About. Okay, let's get to it. Um, That's what we're here for. Which is exactly what we're going to do, in order to fully inform you of those ramifications. We also have to know what the full situation is, which is if there's. Involved, you're asking to predict the future, speculation, and I'm not finish, about. Let me just finish my sentence. Is that okay? If if you're connected to people who are dedicated to the destruction of the Church of Scientology internationally, which Mark Headley is and Jason Begay is, and they have proven that over and over from conferences in Germany, 
trying to take away the religious rights of Germans, and I mean, we can list it all out, which we will go over that. If there's, we, we just need you to be straight with us so we understand exactly where you're coming from so we can inform you of all of those facts. That's all, and that, that's where we're coming from. I'll okay. So if, there, if there's certain I'll tell you where I'm coming from. I'm a guy who's dissatisfied with Scientology, and I want my money back. Of course. Aside okay. from that or beyond that, my life is my life and who I associate with is my choice. What I intend to do is purely in the future. There's no way to speculate. I don't know what I intend to do. Right now, walking in this door, the last thing on my agenda would be to be an active enemy, an active enemy of the Church of Scientology. But sitting here right now, you think this is doing good? No, I have been in the Church of Scientology for 33 years now. I dare you to call me glib. Uh, all right, you know, I gave this a real, real fair chance. I don't know how old you are, Tommy. 26. Yeah, okay. So I got in when you were three. All right. Um, yeah, I know. Okay. Me, my mom knew you when you got in. You okay. got both CC at the same time. Yeah. Vaughn was there. Cetera, you got in actually even before my mom did. So yeah, yeah, I'm seventy six. Yeah, I've been a seer for eighteen years, so I've been at CC for a long time, and I definitely know you and know who you are. Okay. And if you remember that I was there when you got shown orientation for the first time by Marion Powell, we yeah. were in the film room at CC, yeah. and I was part of that presentation. Yeah, I do. Too. I remember that. So I recall all of that, and yeah. I remember you know you getting your commendation for it from the chairman of the board, and I remember you being very emotional about that because it meant a lot to you. So I also remember you being a very dedicated Scientologist and somebody um, for whom the church meant a lot. Um, and, you know, particularly given, and this brings up a valid point, which is, this is really, I guess, the main crux of the conversation, if we want to cut to the quick. You're the guy whose orientation, um, you're the one who's saying we in it. It's very clear that... Uh, that also given that you have been a Scientologist for as long as you've been, that, um, that those are viewpoints that you personally held when you said them. Um, and, um, and of course that's a film that every single Scientologist in the world and every single person who comes into a Church of Scientology to do services sees. Um, and, uh, and, and you are representative of, of, of dynamics in Scientology in that regard. Um, so to the degree that um, you choose to leave the church, which you know, uh, is what you're saying, you you have to realize that communicating that, stating you're long, no longer a Scientologist to to either other Scientologists or to the public at large, or so on and so forth, um, uh, you know, has the potential of creating quite an effect. Oh. And would be believing, and, and I would know. be very upsetting to for well, just to keep it to to a, a tight circle or a close circle to people who are your friends and have known you for some of them for those thirty three years. And I think that there has to be some due consideration made um, to to the church and 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 to those Scientologists by you in how you go about this. Such as, well, anyway, how, as how, how I go about this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. And, I, I don't and, think that's too much to ask. How. Well, how do I go about it? Well, you mentioned wanting to get your money and disappear. I mean, certainly, you know, keeping it to yourself and not talking about it would certainly be appropriate, and thus uh, working well, out some agreements why? on that basis. Why am I supposed to clam up about how I feel about life? Excuse me, I, clam up I should business? disappear and not talk to anybody? Well, Did you, you just said you, say that? You just said you wanted to get your money no, and no, disappear. No, 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 he was repeating back what you said what you wanted said, to go that you, you wanted, wanted to get, get your money and disappear. If you want to rewind and play it back, go ahead. But what I said is that you yourself said to me, I just want to get my money You will disappear. not see me around the church anymore. I, I understand that, Larry. But don't talk to anybody. I mean, that's what you I just said. I didn't say said. don't talk to anybody. This I, is not a um, an extortion. Or is it? No. Okay, so what does that mean? Uh, you're looking for me to just get my money and disappear and don't talk to anybody. That's bullshit. This is a First Amendment in this country. It's actually not what he said. I think there's a mystery. Let's Excuse rewind me. it and play it back. Go for it. That's going to happen on auditions. I'm going to, as I ran into sure. Jason Begay, I'll sure. run into Jim Meskimen. I see him in commercial auditions all the time. Sure. Now, 
am I going to sit there and say, Jim, we got to talk? Right. No. Because I respect Jim. And I respect that this is Jim's choice. And it's not my charge in life to dissuade Jim from being a Scientologist. Now, if somebody asks me about Scientologists, hey, Larry, you're a Scientologist. I'm going to say no. Didn't work for me. I was in 33 years. I spent a lot of money and a long time on Scientology. I, if, 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 that's, if that scenario arises, the likelihood is that's probably what I'll say. Because the reason I'm getting out of Scientology is because I feel it doesn't work, I feel it's hypocritical, and I think that management is corrupt. Management, management is corrupt. Is corrupt. Well, well, you're talking to we'll leave it right, right now, so you're saying I'm corrupt. Management is corrupt. Where did that now, come from? I spent a year and a half on the internet. Okay, do we have to go over this again? Um, did you see it? Huh? Did you see the corruption? What did you actually see with your own eyes that was Not corrupt? the point of this. What is, actually, point, it is the okay, point. are we going to stop this? Do you want? You want to? It's you, one of the reasons we're we, leaving, so we have to understand what you actually saw. Now, that has all been covered. Go over my folders. Go over whatever has been written up in the last year and a half with OSA. It's a matter of record. Are you talking about Not the thing? point in this conversation for you two to go over all of this ground again. Now, if you want to, if we just want to end, I was trying to give you some context. If you want to stop it there and say we can't well, go I'll on. Cut your calm. Go ahead. Okay. So, I'm addressing the point that you were saying, or exploring how active of an anti-Scientologist I'm going to be, okay? Who knows? I have no plans right now. My plan is to get on with my professional life and my personal life. That's all I can say. So, to your point again, where you brought all this up, where you said disappear and not talk to anybody, I will talk to whoever whoever I like. You, you said that. You're the one who said that. No, you're the you one said it, and I stopped and said, what did you just say? No, no, no. I'm telling you, when you spoke to me on the it's phone, okay. you it's said okay. you wanted your money back. You just wanted your money back and to disappear. Okay, so I'm only we're defining what, what you said to me means. on the phone. So oh, yeah, so you're now, defining what disappear. You've now said you're not going to see in the orbs, blah, blah, blah. Right. Okay, so there. Let's get to point B. A to B. Okay. Okay. I mean, we just need to go through the ramifications of what he's doing. You do realize you'll, you'll never, ever, no matter if you have a change of heart in 15 years or 20 years or you're on your deathbed or you get in an accident and you feel like an assistant, you will never be able to get services from a church of Scientology. Absolutely. Like, it's even like I do not consider Scientology the path to spiritual freedom and, and the only way out of the trap. That's fine. I'm just, so to I'm just telling you. At the end of orientation, you're the one who said, you know... I believed it then. I don't believe it anymore. And I do understand that Scientology will never be available to me again. Yes. Okay. And you do understand that the people who you are associated with, who are Scientologists, may very well choose, and most likely will choose, to never be associated with you again. Absolutely. Because there's no communication from you. There's no effort on your part to say, look, I just want my money back. I, I have no intention to attack. I won't be doing a YouTube video. I won't be, um, you know, feeding data to Jason and Mark to speak on my behalf. I have no intention to do media, so on and so forth. You're not saying any of those things. And the number of these types of meetings that I've had over the years where I've dealt with people who are somehow upset or whatever, or in some cases wanted their money back or this or that or whatever, um, they always write out front and say, you know, and I'm not, you know, and, and I, I just want you to know that, you know, I'm, you know, my thing with the church is personal, sure. but I don't want to hurt anybody else. I don't want to cause upset for anybody else, and so on and so forth. And, and they literally just on their own originally it's not me saying anything. And you've made no mention of that whatsoever. No, because you know what? Those people are liars. Well, no, because the vast majority of them then didn't. They didn't they, do media, they I'm didn't sorry. attack, they didn't go on the internet, they but, didn't But any they of those couldn't things. make that statement truthfully. Um, they said it to appease you. Sorry, integrity. Let's, I'm, I'm, I'm coming at you now with full integrity on this. I haven't got a clue. You're lying. What? Well, that just ended that conversation. Call me a liar. I don't even get the sentence out of my mouth. Next step. Go ahead and finish your sentence. No, I'm sorry. You just called me a liar. You called me an, a liar right in the middle of the... Look, here's the thing, Larry. You want your money back. Thank you. We're willing to give you your money back to a degree, but we also don't have to give you your money back, and I think you've forgotten that. 
So we're just trying to work through some of these issues so we can help you get what you want and get what we want and everybody's happy, excuse my language, everybody's happy, everybody's fine, and you can go your separate way and do your thing. Okay. But the bottom line is we don't have to give you your money back. Okay, and so you can leave Scientology and you can go do whatever you want. That is your choice. It really is your choice. All, or, all I'm trying to communicate is, is that there's, a, there, there's some real concern and it's valid. Now, am I, do I actually consider it like some horrible threat? Um, no. No. Do I, do I actually think it's going to be damaging? No. I mean, yeah, it's going to cost us a couple million dollars to redo the films that you were in. Um, it's already going to uh, cost us... Uh, uh, you know, millions to redo the films that Jason was in, um, and and we've already uh, prepared the suit that we're going to be bringing against him to recoup those costs, um, because you know you you can't do that. Just even take it out from the whole Scientology realm. If you had a th you know, let's say, well, you would know this, like in, in infomercial land. Let's say you did an infomercial, and you were the star of the infomercial, and then you went out and said, you know, it's BS. The product is a piece of crap. Uh, it doesn't work, and this and that, and so on and so forth. The company that paid you for that infomercial would not only have grounds to sue you for doing that; they would actually have grounds to then uh, uh, get damages, you know, for for having done that. The analogy doesn't apply. And but let's not get into huh? it. The and analogy does not apply. But why let's not? Not get into it. Uh, this is a church. Well, I'm just giving it's you not a crush. I already took it out of the realm okay. of Scientology. I said take it out of the realm of Scientology. The church hires me to do a film. They hire me as an actor. That's correct. I have no obligations to remain a church member or believe in the tenets of the church. Yeah, you so did. There. You did sign agreements, though. Oh, by the way, I'd like copies of those when before I leave. Okay. Because uh, I'd like to see the um, yeah stipulations uh, whereby I'm responsible for the budget of uh, orientation. I further Should recognize I that I have a duty of trust to the church not to reveal any information, knowledge, or data of any nature which might tend to harm, malign, damage, injure, or adversely affect the church in any of its activities, plans, or programs. I further agree that in the event that I breach this promise of non-disclosure by publishing, displaying, disclosing, revealing, relating, or disseminating this confidential information, or otherwise violating this non-disclosure bond, I will pay the Church of Scientology and the National Gold Measure Productions $10,000 for each and every breach. And what is the confidential information that I would be revealing? Um, well, let me just finish here. I've read a lot of legal contracts. That has to do with confidential, inf confidential information. Mm -hmm. It has nothing to do with my belief in the Church. If I cease to be a believer in the Church, I cannot be held responsible for the cost of the film. Okay, but he made the veiled threat the other day that I'm re I am. Uh, oh, we are suing Jason uh, for, for the good luck. <laughs> yeah, I've been an actor too many years. Uh, I mean, it's 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 ludicrous on the face of it to say that somebody leaves the church that they can now be held responsible for the cost of the film. Well, Those no, are no, no, he didn't just that, leave the church. He didn't just leave the church. He left. And so confidential information. Well, no, okay. Well, no, there you go. Put them on the internet, spoke violently I, about. I it. give you, I, I, absolutely. I mean, I, I know the law, you know. Um, and then you take to confidential the information, such as OT materials or whatever, and make that public. Church has got a really good suit. I don't have any confidential information. Okay. Okay. Got it. I was a spokesman for the church when I truly believed what I was saying. Sure. I mean, there's even stipulations in your contracts where it covers the fact that right. when you're no longer, even if you choose to no longer be a Scientologist. I have no confidential information. Okay, I got it. Couch that was saying, have you heard me attack the church yet? I've just simply told you I've had losses in the church. Well, you have Aside from saying that I think that the management well, is corrupt. Which, that's if you say that one more time, I'm going to walk out of the room because you're lying when you say that and you do not know what you're talking about. You have no evidence of it and you've never seen with your own eyes. No, I do have it. That, that is the case. I so frankly do have evidence of, of, of it. Um, you know, what that, is the evidence? Uh, the fact that we... Here's one. I don't know if this is one because I didn't buy them. Is this the new basic book that I bought four times? I don't know. Is this finally... Is this finally book finally per LRH? Yes, that book is per LRH. What about the one before yeah, I, and, yeah the one, and the one before, before it. I don't know about that. And the one before it. I have four versions of this book. Okay. I bought it each time. Mm -hmm. The last story I swallowed was how dictation people got it mixed up. That's corrupt. 
because for the two years that this thing, this package was being released, they were selling the old non-LRH books. I bought them. Where's my fair trade for my old books that they were selling me for the pure LRH? That's corrupt. Okay. That's corrupt. There's no other word for it. Well, it is. Okay. The second somebody at Gold said, hey, we just found some data here. We've dug up some false, falsely interpreted dictaphone records. Pull the plug. Pull the plugs like the peanuts, the soiled peanuts at the uh, <coughs> in Georgia. I'm pulling on a new story. I don't know if you know about, but uh, Did you see the a recall. Event? I was there. Yes, okay. I was the most ARC breaking. That was the, by the way, that was the straw that broke the camel's back. That was the night where so I went. So because Sun SP 50 years ago, all oh, don't, the don't, don't, it, don't even go there. That, that's the, you know, listen, yes. That means management yes. today is corrupt. Yes. No, management today Who's decided management? to, well, we all know nothing happens in the church unless it's uh, uh, originated at the RTC, the head of RTC, okay? Chairman so you're talking board. about, you're, you're saying to us the CFE is corrupt. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let me ask a question. Is that a surprise? You see all this? In the churches I was telling you about? The programs, the people, the Narconons, Arrowhead, Spanish Lake, all these things that are teaching people how to read. You know what I mean? That are really getting people off drugs for reading. Did I say this is corrupt? Who do you really think does that, Who do you Larry? think does this? Who do you think puts this out? Who do you think makes it possible? Who do you think pushes it? Who do you think demands that it gets out? Okay? Any insanity or any difficulties or any turmoil that occurred at in management, it's the people who are out there fishing and moaning about it were the ones that were doing it. And you know what? I could line up hundreds of people who would attest to that fact. Including who would talk declared to you, SPs. Including declared SPs. People who were themselves at management and were kicked out for their corrupt activities and their gross waste and the things that they did that wasted Frischner's funds and so on and so forth and were excommunicated for it and expelled from the church for it. Even they, when I talk to them, will tell me about how the Mark Headleys of the world and these kinds of people, that anything that they could think of that was bad of when they were there, those were the guys that were making it that way and saying it's probably so much better now that they're gone, which is true. It is. So I don't know what you think is going on, and I don't know what it is that you've been convinced, but the fact of the matter well, is you ain't seen it with your own eyes. You didn't sit and listen to the LRH dictation, and you sure as hell weren't in LRH compilations and, and, uh, and, and editorial figuring right. out what but these problems me, were. Let me, so okay. if you want to talk to me about the chairman of the board, RTC, you... So you don't want to hear what I have to say. You're just going well, to hear it. No, no, I don't want to hear what you have to say about the, chairman of the board. about the chairman of the board. You're not going to have ears to listen to it. Absolutely not. Like, I won't hear it. You, uh, you, you asked me for an example of why I felt management was corrupt. Yeah, and I got right. your example. Okay. I got your example. I'm simply saying books that have been written Have you ever gotten a single person off drugs? Yeah. Yourself? Yeah. Who? Good friends. Fine. Can I ask you a question? Yes, and I have to go very shortly because I have to be at an appointment. I have a scheduled appointment at the gym, so I'm going to get going. A scheduled appointment at the gym? Yes. Okay. Well, um, I'm not, not here for the day. This was supposed to be a short, relatively short. We've been here for an hour and a half now. Dude, you're the one that wants your money back. I mean, it's, it is what it is. Ask are, you, are, you, uh, are you, like, broke? No, I'm really actually. I'm not even going to answer that, that, answer that question because I, I, if you can't answer, if there's a, a, a Mark Eight being made at gold, I'm going to tell you whether my what my financial situation is. <laughs> well, you just you're what? bringing up all the all the objections you have, all the things you're bringing up are money oriented. The buying the new books, buying I'm not money books, oriented. Buying the, well, that those things are money oriented. I, I'm not even I'm not even criticizing you for being broke. If you are, the the economy is the economy right now, and I'm painfully aware of it. We yeah. both are. No, I just. If I'll, this I'll, is money oriented. We can I'll solve that. I'll humor you. To... I mean, I should be insulted, and I am, but I'll humor you. No, I am not broke. Okay. And the reasons for the questions that apparently you're categorizing as money oriented. No, they just. Not, they, 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 that has nothing to do with money. It has to do with.
Well, it does have to do with money, but not mine. It has to do with the, because I didn't buy the basic books. I own them three times. The books, the LRH tech. Mm -hmm. Okay, not the basic book. Um, but everybody else on the planet is buying the books at whatever, the $3,500 or whatever they were selling for. Or, um, I think they came with tapes. I, there was a diff couple different tiers or something. They came mm -hmm. with books, some came with tapes or whatever. Um, so that to me, this is my, my group. And I saw what I felt was an effort to grab another ton of money from a lot of people. So my impact, yeah, it's, it's not a money-oriented question. Because no one's really complaining about having to buy them again. Very few people are. So not what I saw. I was not the only one B.I.s at the event that night. Okay. Okay. So. You saw what you wanted to see. Look. <laughs> yeah, I saw what I saw. Okay. Right this instant, you are at the threshold of your next trillion years. You will live it in shivering, agonized darkness, or you will live it triumphantly in the light. The choice is yours, not ours.